into your holy. It's not because we deserve it, but He put the whole holiness in you. So we can serve Him um, a better. Uh, thank you again, uh, Sister Catherine, for your declaration. And uh, just want to quickly remind for those who want to open Bibles, uh, Pastor Joshua will be preaching continuing uh, 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses uh, 1 14. Uh, so I'll invite a pastor now. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for our author. And uh, we love to see you. And once again, welcome to Global Mission Vision Fellowship. And if you are nearby in this place of Orange County, we'd like to invite you to come and minister together with us, serve together with us, fellowship together with us, worship together with us, and enjoy the great friends and brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. And we are here at 8461 Garden Grove Boulevard, Garden Grove City, California. So we are here on every Friday night, Saturday night at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We also have the Mandarin service. We also have Vietnamese service. So please come and serve together with us. Or if you know someone who speaks in those languages, please invite them to come and join together with us. And today, we continue with our topic on nothing can hinder the Lord from saving. Amen. And last week, we were able to study only the first one is that even when nowhere, no one is aware. Okay. Even though we do not see that help is coming, but the, the Lord is always do something miraculously happen in order to bring the salvation for us, to bring the deliverance for us, to bring the providence for us, to bring the wisdom for us when we needed it most. So let us just be assured and do not be afraid, but continue to trust in the Lord for His great mighty deliverance upon our life. Amen. And today we are going to uh, cover the, the, the last two points of our lesson today and uh, it will talk about even when there seems to be no one but I. And the last point we are going to talk about is that even when the confirmation or the direction or the guidance from the Lord seems to be very strange. And what are we going to do in those situations? And even though it doesn't go according with our logic, okay, according to what we think or what we thought, but let us just move on and know the leading of the Lord, the guidance of the Lord, so that we can be saved and sound in Jesus' name. Okay, let us just once again remind ourselves about the story. So we know about the story that they, when Saul and the Israelite was attacked, by the Philistine. They're having a hard time and they don't have any weapons web, at all. And they are under the defeat. They are in scared, they are afraid, they're in poverty, they don't have the freedom, they cannot enjoy their life, and they are always worried that the Philistine could come at any time and attack them and kill them all. And we know that they have to hide in the cave. They have to hide in the forest in order to go uh, the, to, to avoid the enemies. But at this time, the Philistine has become stronger. And they determined to destroy the Israelites. And that's why they divided the troop into three directions in order to attack the Israelites. But at that time, that God was speaking together with Jonathan, the son of Saul. And that's why Jonathan talked to his armor bearer that come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. And even though Jonathan didn't tell his father and both of them, only two of them, just went out in order to spy about their enemies and seeing and searching and seeking the Lord for the direction of what to do. And then we also see that as they came out and they went to the cliff, to the north toward Milmash, the other to the south toward Geba, and Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. 
and nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Then he has the agreement, the support of the armor bearer. And he said, do all that you have in mind. And his armor bearer said, go ahead, I'm with you, heart and soul. And Jonathan said, come on, then we will cross over toward them and let them see us. Okay, so I will continue with the story. So, and I'm going to share to you about the background. And we have been talking about the first boy that when no one was even aware of. But remember, our God is always watching over every one of us. His eyes are on the sparrow and his eyes are always upon our lives. He knows the thing that you and I are going through. He knows the pain that we have just like God feel the pains of the Israelite when he was in Egypt. Okay? Just like when God just gave an answer to Esther, Mordecai, and the Israelite when they were at the edge of depression, at the edge of annihilation. They are going to die anyway. Even though when we see the enemies are surround, the unbeliever try to harm us. And we see that the people have no passion. They don't support us in many ways. They even accuse us, attack us, persecuted us. And we see that our rivals in our workplace, and it seems that they are a mount. There are so many, they are surrounding us. But yet, even in those situations, God is still watching every one of us. Amen. And today, let us just move Amen. on to the second point that we said, when it seemed to be no one but I. How many of you have that feeling? I have that feeling yes, anytime. Same. You know, I have that feeling anytime. Like, Why I'm alone? Why I'm alone? Why only me, Lord? But that is a way that the enemies always try to put into our mind in order to discourage us. Why everybody have money? Why everybody have networks? Why everybody have a lot of things that they can do? But me, I'm alone. Yes, there will be some time that we have to be alone. There will be some time that we have to take the initiative. But here in this story we see that Jonathan as a prince but how many people that he had with him? Only one. Only one. Even though he had 1,000 men under him. Okay? The Bible said that Saul kept with him 2,000 men. But then suddenly, they just scatter. Maybe they were afraid. They run away. And then Saul only had 600 left with him. And Jonathan has 1,000 men before, but now we didn't see more men, but only one, his armor bearer. Maybe he didn't call other people. But we see from this story that when Jonathan said to his young, young armor bearer, come, let's go to the outpost of those uncircumcised. In other words, just go to the outpost, to the army of the Philistine. And maybe the young armor bearer said, are we going the whole army? 1,000 of us will come together? And Jonathan just said, no. Only you and I. That's a crazy idea. How many of you will say yes in that situation? Are you sure you will say yes in that situation? I don't think so. It would be very difficult for you and I to say yes in that situation. Because the young arm, arm bearer, even though he was very courageous, even though he was very fierce. But when he looked at the thousands upon thousands of the enemies, he would be afraid. But we thank God in this story, it will tell us that even the situation like that, even he saw that the Philistines had even 3,000 chariots and 6,000 charioties and the people or the soldier are just as numerous as sin. But he still say yes to Jonathan. And that is where the miracle took place. And I'm glad with all of you that we start with one and two and one. We start and begin to bring one another. 
And as we move along, and we do something that almost, almost people in this area seem to be afraid of, that is to do church planting. They were so afraid of that because they don't want to sacrifice. They know that they will face many issues. They even face with the persecution, they have to pay a lot of money, right? And that's why we see that most of the churches in the United States, when they do the church planting, mostly the mother church begins to give about 50 members or 100 members to a new place and then they start the church. But someone crazy just like me, right? And call brother, 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 brother Thomas, brother Arthur, brother Mike, said the blessing, let's go and pioneer the church. Amen. But I'm happy, I'm glad that you are just like the young armor bearer. And he said, do all that you have in mind. And I'm so thankful for all of you, even though I'm failed. I failed many times. But you're still believing. You're still supporting. You're still praying. And you're still serving together. Because I believe that God begins to put into your heart the vision. And you will also see that beside many of the failures, we also have many of the successes in our life. He said that, let's begin to go there. And as our ministry here in the U.S., maybe begin with one or only a few people. When God called me to go into China and begin to do the ministry, at that time, I thank God. I have only me, my wife, and look at that time, was still in the womb. Three of us. Only three of us going to a place that we know no one's in that place. But we are ready to go into that place. And we begin to suffer <laughs> at the beginning. Really suffer. It's not very really easy. We have to suffer. We have to struggle very hard. But we continue to just, just pray and persist in that calling. Whether it is for the Muslim people, whether it is for the Buddhist people, whether it is for the atheist people. And then God began to bring someone to come. And do you know what happened? God brought, the first one God brought into our ministry to support our ministry is a non-believer. Could you just imagine? And when we start the ministry, and this man suddenly he heard from someone, he heard from someone that we start a Bible school and then he just came and offered himself and he said, what can I do for you? And then I, I was so happy, I thought that he was a believer. He said, are you a believer? He said, no, I'm not a believer. So I asked him, why do you do this? And he said that I know that Christians are good and I heard about your vision. I heard about your plan to take care of the young children and begin to train them. And I want to become part of this. And I asked him, what is your condition? And he said, I have no condition. The only condition I have is that, please pray that God bless me and my family, hallelujah. And I said to him that, hey, that's okay. That condition is okay. I love to do that for you. We will pray for you. But you know that for many months, we have been praying, but it seems that there's no one answer to us. Almost one year, brothers and sisters. And maybe some of you have heard about my story about Luke when he was born. After he was born, we don't even have money to buy milk for him. And whatever that we get from the family members later on they give, then we save the money in order to buy the cheapest meal ever for Luke. And we cry out, say, Lord, you send us here. And we also have many friends who promises us that when one of the friends said, when your feet touch at one of the airports in China, the money will flow inside. Amen. Do you like it? But even today, after 25 years, not even one single cent. It's not that they don't bless. But God has the purposes. They are very generous to many other places. But for some reason, God wants us to trust and the way for God to send the right person and we begin to see something great going to happen. Amen. And I don't know about you when you do the business, 
And you're looking for the partner. You're looking for a place. You're looking for the resources. You're looking for the connection, but it seems that you didn't see. But let us thank God for the people of faith surrounding us. And as I told you, that I never believe that in the kingdom of God, there are no co-workers. There are always co-workers available somewhere, someplace, sometime. I don't know yet, but they are there. And when we continue to trust the Lord, and in time, the Lord is going to bring them to us. And I want to say thank you for many of you. Amen. And that's why today, we already start the English service. We start the Vietnamese service. We start also the Mandarin service. And maybe some of you also watched yesterday online that every Saturday morning we have the Evangelist 10 meeting. And we have this place as a house of prayer. And we have today more than 20 prayer lines. We have the social media platform. We have, we have, we have. Just by the grace of God. And because of you and I are willing to say yes together. So let us appreciate the people. And I want to appreciate all of you. The people of faith that God sent to support and stand together with us. Don't see that we are just only a few. Yes, we was a few before. At that time, my wife looked after that six months old, and then we moved to Shanghai. When we moved to Shanghai, we also do not know any, even one single Christian we do not know. We have no relative there. But God just suddenly brought that non-believer to come. And He provided us the finance. He provided us the chair for the student. He provided many things that needed for the school. And we start with that. And to make the story short, before I left, we have 100 full-time co-workers. We have more than 1,000 part-time and volunteer co-workers from 450 cities of the nation. And soon, to be 661 city of, the na uh, of that nation, we will have co-workers. Things might change. And when I came here, alone, alone, and alone. And you know that feeling. And I'm sure Brother Arthur also know that feeling when he moved from Poland and came to the United States. Lonely. I need friends. I need family members. But that is the sacrifice, the price that you and I have to pay before we are going to see greater things is going to happen, just like this story. Let us serve together with people of faith that God has in store for us and with us. And remember, as I said, people of faith are always available over there. And let us just go to the story of Elijah. When Elijah was afraid and ran for his life, when Elijah wanted, even wanted to die because he was so disappointed, when Elijah was complaining, when Elijah said, only him alone are passionate for God, he said, I'm the only one who served God. And for him, the whole Israelite people already betrayed God, already turned away from God. And maybe we are looking today in our society, and it seems only a few people who are so faithful. But that is, would be a wrong notion that the devil wants to plant into your mind and my mind. And I refuse to believe in those thoughts. And every time that that thought to come and complain and be start to complain, and I rebuke and I remove it in the name of Jesus, because I know God, in the kingdom of God, there are so many co-workers. There are so many people of faith. When Elijah believed that everyone turned away from the Lord, and this is what the Lord has answered to him. Let us see in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10. He said like this, I have been, actually he repeats many times like this, at least three times. He said the same thing for three times. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. And the Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altar, and put your prophet to death with your sword. And he said, I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. Maybe some of you are saying, oh, I'm the only one who print food. I'm the only one who pick up for other people. I'm the only one who lead the worship. I'm the only one who give. I'm the only one to do this and do that. And when you have that mindset, I'm the only one. Why me? Why Pastor Joshua always ask me? 
Consider it's a blessing from the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Somebody will say amen for that. <laughs> but there will be a day that you will see thousands of people. And maybe you may not know on about support so far. With the 20 plus, the prayer line alone, we have many co-workers who are serving. And every month we have about 200 speakers who are speaking and preaching and sharing on those lines. So you are not alone. We may not see it, but we thank God. Jonathan see it. This young arm, armor bearer see it. He see and they saw in faith. But this is what God, God responded to Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 18. He said, yet I reserve 7,000 people. God said 7,000 people, not only one. Maybe at that time, Elijah was very surprised. No, Lord, only me. But God said, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel and all whose knee have not bowed down to bow and those whose mouth have not kissed him. Amen. And now we begin to go back with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We thought only three of them didn't, only three of them didn't bow down, right? Isn't it? No. The Bible said, 7,000 of them, who are they? At that time, where they were, they just hide themselves. But they are there. They love God. And then we also see that when the king of Aram was at war with Israel. Let us just see about this story. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16, when Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, saw the enemies were surrounding the city, and he said, Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? But the servant of the Lord said to Gehazi, Elijah said, Do not be afraid, Amen. because those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Gehazi can only see the enemies. He didn't see the armies of the Lord. But the prophet of the Lord said, No, we, are, we have even more people than those enemies, even though it seemed that they are as numerous as sin. And at that time, Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 7, and Elisha prayed in verse 17, open his eye, Lord, so that he may see. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 17. And this, then the Lord opened the eyes of the servant eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Hallelujah. And that is what I see. That's what Jonathan see. Even though when we look at us, only me, only one or two, only a few of us. But in the kingdom of God, there are many invisible armies of God, invisible warriors of God are still surrounding us. And when you have enough faith to trust the Lord, you're going to see what Elisha said. That when, as the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. And so he struck them with blindness and as Elisha have asked, and I can share to you more and more about the story of how does God just provide the people to come into our life. But let us begin to believe together and pray from this day on that we are going to see that God is going to bring more and more people into the ministry. Open our eyes, open our ear, open our heart to see that God is sending someone to comfort you to encourage you and I, to pray and guide you and I, to love and care for you and I, to support you and I financially and emotionally, to give us the advice and the wisdom to just stand with us and just smile. Yes, you know that just your presence is already encouragement. You may not have to do a lot of things, but you may just be there to stand and pray together with me, and that also encouraged me to move on and to know that the Lord keep on sending the people. And I tell you this, these people may look very ordinary. They may not seem to be an expert. They might not talk properly even. They might not suit our taste. They may act very strange. They may be totally different from us. 
But let us begin to pray that the Lord will open our spiritual eye to see the gifting in each and every one of them. And that's why you see that I never disappointed because of those who are coming to church. Because from my spiritual perspective, I see different. You could be the people who just want the Lord bring here in order to encourage me. You may not do many things. But the Lord just bring you here to encourage me. To just say hello to me so that I will not be lonely. But then, from then, we are going to see the armies of the Lord will be formed. Will be trained. Will be sent out. And they will worship and they will serve together with us. Amen. Vision 20%. The vision I always said to you. In a nutshell, it is the call to the body of Christ to come together for the unity, mission, and revival. So that there would be an increase of 20% of the population in our village, district, county, city, and nation to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When we talk about this mission, it seems very easy, right? But we need many hands. What are the goals of this mission? In order to accomplish this mission, we need to have 10 million prayer warriors alone to come and join together with us. And that's why I share with you our goal is to start 10,000 prayer lines. And even though we have less than 30 prayer lines right now, but it doesn't mean we don't have more. And each prayer line, we need so many co-workers. And as you can see, that I'm looking for what? At least 300 Gideons, okay? For every category, 300 million of pastor and leader, 300 million of believer, 300 million workers, 300 million for ministry team leader, 300 million for prayer warrior, 300 million for interpreter into various languages. I'm looking for 300 million for coordination of the country. I need the 300 million for the prayer warriors for the house of prayer. I need the 300 million for the worship as a worship team member and leader. I need the 300 million for dance, for banner, for team member, for every department, you name it. In order to carry out this one. And now, when you think about this one, you begin to understand the reason why I work so hard for the social media platform. Because without it, we can hardly connect people. And I can tell you even more of the 300 million, many, 300 million speaker as a speaker for Vision TV alone for one channel. Each channel, we need about that. But we have 100 channel and in the future, 1,000 channel, you just imagine. 300 million as a financial sponsor, 300 million as a volunteer to serve. For as a businessman and woman, as a politician and government officer, as medical doctors and nurses, as charity and mission organization, as journalists, and you name it. And my eyes is always open. Amen. Even though I don't see them now. But just like Dr. Cho Yang Yi, one of the, pa the pastor of the largest church in the world. When people ask him, and he said, I have a big church, the biggest church in the world. And the people look at him and said, this pastor, maybe he's crazy. He works so much and he's crazy. He doesn't have anything. And he said that it's just like a mother who conceived a baby. And the mother already imagined, if it is a boy, how does he look? If it is a girl, how does she look? But it had to go through a process of nine months to bear, to conceive, to bear, and let the children to grow in that. Even though we may not see it, but we can feel it. And that is exactly I'm also learning from the spiritual eyes. And I see this thing will happen very soon. And the third thing and the last thing, even when the confirmation is strange, we are still trusting the Lord, even though the way that He said is very strange. It is unacceptable. But when we just say yes to the Lord, we are going to see the deliverance of God, the saving of God is very powerful. Okay? This is what He said. Wait there until we come to you. We will stay where we are 
and not go up to them. But if they say, this is what Jonathan talked to the armor bearer. But if they say, come up to us and we will climb up because that will be outside that the Lord has given them into our hands. Of course, when the enemy saw that, they are mainly, of course, they will chase us, right? Logically speaking. But Jonathan asked God aside that whenever he said, come up to us, when the enemy just come, come up to us, that is the sign of the Lord is going to bring the miracles. Amen. And it sounds, it seemed very scary, very illogical. Jonathan and the young armor bearer could have doubts about that. They could have argued, but remember, doubt, hesitation, and fears are often getting into our way. One time, I was persecuted, I was brought into the police station. And then, they begin to talk to me again, that they're going to separate me and my family and deport me out of the country. In a normal cases, usually we can say, oh, I will listen to you and everything will be fine. But at that time I was praying and suddenly God gave me an idea. And this idea I know, I talk out this, this idea, they would not be very happy. You know what? The Lord gave me. I talked to them, do you want to monitor one person or one thousand? And then they asked, what do you mean, Pastor? I said, now every day you can monitor me, you can come to my home, you can call me anytime, you can ask me to do this and do that, stop me from doing this, from doing that. But if you deport me out, I'm going to go all over the world to preach that China need 1,000 missionary, need 10,000 missionary to come into this nation. At that time, you would, it would be hard for you to monitor 1,000 or 10,000. When I say like that, you know that their eyes just like got upset. And I can see that. But the Lord just gave me the peace and I just smiled at, the, at them. And suddenly I saw that they had changed in their attitude. And they said, okay, you go home. Tomorrow coming back. And the next day I come back, they was very happy. They treat me very nice. And I can survive there for another three years before I was deported. But you see that sometimes that God just give us some of the crazy ideas. And we have to say yes to it. If we believe, and you, when you and I just believe and trust without doubt and hesitation, we are going to see today God is still speaking to us through many ways. Whether if God is speaking to you through the oral voice, dream and vision, angel, prophets and people, his direct confirmation, His signs or wonder, His providence or guidance or whatever the way that God is speaking to you. And maybe God may seem very strange and illogical. Remember Philip? God called, you just go into the highway over there. For what Lord? Over there there's no people. But because Philip just obeyed God and he went there and he saw the Ethiopian eunuch, the high-ranking officer, and that is how the gospel being brought into Ethiopia today. It seems it doesn't work in our way, in our logic. But God always has His great way. Many people may not see God's revelation for you and I at the beginning. Many people may not dare to take that big step of faith as you and I did at the beginning. Many people may not see the doors and the opportunity that God opened at each step for you and I at the beginning. But it's when you and I begin to see, to say yes and obey God, that is where the deliverance took place. And as I'm going to close with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel chapter 3. How many of you still remember at that time? When King Nebuchadnezzar set up a status, and he said that everybody had to bow down before the status. But we know right now there are at least 7,000 people who didn't bow down. 
But Kingdom Ganesha just brought three of them that represent you as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we see from this story, we begin to see that when they threw them into the furnace, but Nebuchadnezzar begin to see four people instead of four, or instead of three. And the fourth one just like the son of God. And that's why he was so surprised. And in Daniel chapter 3, verse 26, Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the place in furnace and shout, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, come out and come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the Shadrach pre prefect, governors, and royal advisor grounded among them. And they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head signed. Their robe was not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. And you know what did Nebu Nebuchadnezzar said? And this is what he said. He said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and rescued his servant. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up, give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their own god. And therefore I decree that the people of all nation or language who say anything against the god of Sarah, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces and their house will be burned into pie of rubble. For no other god can say this word. And may God will bless every one of us because when you begin to walk into the guidance of God, when no one seemed to be aware, seemed no one was there with us, it seemed that the direction is strange, but it's there we can see the deliverance of God, the provision of God, the providence of God, the protection of God, the power of God at work. There you and I begin to see the peace of God to reign and we are going to see the bountiful blessing and a big Victory is waiting for you and I Amen. when we Amen. say yes. Amen. And Kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar conclude. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. I love this one. I'm waiting for the time of promotion. I'm waiting for the time that our church is going to move up in mighty, in power, in the province of God. I'm looking for the day that we're going to go back in order to do the crusade. We are going looking back for the days that we're going to have the leadership conference, the setup conference. We're looking forward for the day of promotion. We're going to see that tons of money is going to be support the house of church planters. I know the time. But that is how our God bring deliverance and save our life. Let us invite our brother Thomas to sing praise to the Lord with the song Way Maker. And that is who our God he is going to bring you the promotion, deliverance, and salvation as well. In Jesus' name, brother, let's give a big hand to our brother. We also collect an offering as a song in the sand. Amen. This morning I had uh, a few scriptures that uh, came to mind and it just uh, confirms with the message we have today. And the first one is um, in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 where the Spirit of the Lord is, uh, when two or more gather in His name, the Spirit of the Lord is here, God is here. And um, and in um, Second Corinthians chapter three verse seventeen, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. How many of you know that we need freedom from our deaths, freedom from sickness, freedom from anxiety, depression? We need freedom, and so uh, we just pray that our God is a way maker, and that when He blesses us, then we can become a blessing to our church, to those who uh, we owe money to, and to um, to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, would you please just uh, pray for me as God anoints my voice to uh, sing better to glorify Him. Amen? Amen. And if you know the song of Waymaker, go ahead and sing along. Amen. <laughs>
that will be a great time to spend and worship God and uh, give testimony and maybe to know each other and spread the uh, good news to, to others. That's a wonderful uh, event if you can come. Uh, that's a, a city of Westminster. You can, you can find it easily. Uh, I have the address, so I, I'll give you. Uh, 14200 Golden West Street, city of Westminster. So 6.30 this coming Saturday, November 4th. Everyone is welcome. And uh, just to finish, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, this wonderful ministry, this wonderful people, people who want to dedicate their life to you, Jesus Christ. You are our Lord, you are our Savior, you keep us, you deliver every, every need we, we need that's in you, and, and you take care of every single thing that we don't even have to, we, have, we don't have to even speak what we need. We, you know what we need, what we're going through. Father, thank you for your presence here. Thank you for blessings. We want to pray more and more to you for, for people. We want to be closer every single moment with you, want to follow you, Jesus. Thank you and thank you and always will thank you to our only God and Father. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.